Another question that your professor might ask you is this. What was the disposition of the matter at the Court of Appeals? And the answer would be something like this. The Court of Appeals denied the petitioner's application for writ of mandamus to compel the district court to vac vacate his order. All right? Now, here again, you are going to be responsible for keeping up at where you are in terms of what happened at the district court level, what happened at the uh, circuit court level, the appeals court level, so that if you're talking about a Supreme Court case, you're precise as to what happened at each level. Finally, your professor may ask you this. What was the ruling by the United States Supreme Court in this case? The judgment was reversed and the case was remanded for further proceedings. The district court erred in refusing the petitioner's demand for a trial by jury of the factual issues related to the question of whether there had been a breach of contract or a trademark infringement. And the Court of Appeals should have corrected that order, that error, by granting the petitioner for the petition for mandamus. The next question might be something like this. What was the Supreme Court's rationale in reaching this decision? What was the Supreme Court's rationale in reaching this decision? Now, in this case, the, the uh, professor is asking you to identify the basis for the court's decision. And the court said that where both legal and equitable issues are presented in a single case, any legal issues for which a trial by jury is timely and properly demanded must be submitted to a jury. The court also said that insofar as the complaint in this case requests a money judgment, it presents a claim which is unquestionably legal. The court went on to say that a different conclusion is not required by the fact that the complaint is cast in terms of an accounting rather than in terms of an action for debt or damages. And the court also said that the legal claim here involved was not rendered purely equitable by the nature of the defenses interposed by the petitioner. The next question, what was the ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court? What did the court conclude? The judgment was reversed and the cause was remanded for further proceedings. The court said that the district judge erred, made a mistake, in refusing petitioner's demand for a trial by jury of the factual issues that were related to the question of whether there had been a breach of contract or trademark infringement. And the Court of Appeals should have corrected that error by granting the petition for mandamus. Now, in this particular case, there was an interesting passage in which the court discussed the history of the federal rules of civil procedure. And your professor may ask questions such as, what was the significance of the federal rules of civil procedure in this case? And here's what the court said. When the procedure in the federal courts was modernized by the adoption of the federal rules of civil procedure in 1938, it was deemed advisable to abandon that part of the holding of Scott versus Neely, which rested upon the separation of law and equity to permit the joinder of legal and equitable claims in a single action. In other words, what we're saying is, what the court was saying was that prior to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure being enacted, there was a separation. There was law and equity. And then your professor is probably going to ask a question such as this. What is the distinction between law and equity? And this is a very important distinction. An action at law is considered to be a lawsuit where someone is trying to get money damages. Money equals damages. In other words, a person has been injured and they set a dollar amount as to what they want from the defendant to compensate them for that, image, for that injury. That's called damages. That's an action at law. An action at equity is different. An action at equity is an action in which the court is being asked to force to order the defendant to do something. Uh, and the, the, uh, the action in equity is basically fairness. Equity means fairness. And sometimes the court is being asked to uh, order the person to refrain from doing something, to stop doing something. Uh, that's called an injunction. And that is usually done in, in what's when the court is sitting as a court of equity. 
this case is identifying the fact that the United States decided that the prior history of separating a court of law from a court of equity uh, was no longer the, uh, the better way to go. So in order to, to be more effective, we now have a system whereby we have joinder. We have uh, a court that sits both at law and in equity, so that if you are, you, a plaintiff has a, a, a grievance against a, a defendant and some of the claims are, are claims in which he or she is seeking money damages at law, uh, and in addition they want the, the uh, defendant to stop doing whatever it is they're complaining about, they can bring all of those causes of action, law and equity, into one lawsuit. 